Welcome back. We have a few final reports to go over today. Starting off in Clyde, Ohio, May 6, 2023. You can see this aircraft uh, did a forced landing into the field. We're going to figure out what happened on this NTSB final report. So here you can see it is missing a wing. And the pilot was 69 years old, seriously injured and airlifted to the hospital. The pilot was performing touch and go landings at the airport nearby uh, during the initial climb. After an uneventful landing, the engine lost all power. He was unable to return to the airport, so did a forced landing in this farm field. The pilot sustained serious injuries and the airframe was substantially damaged. There's that wing, no fuel on the ground. There's the ground scarring to the right there. The post-accident examination of the airplane revealed that the right wing was severed during the forced landing and the right wing fuel tank was compromised. However, seven gallons of fuel were recovered from it. The left wing was intact and undamaged. About one quart of fuel was recovered from the left tank and the cockpit fuel selector handle was found in the left tank position. The engine and fuel systems revealed no evidence of anything happening uh, pre-existing to the crash. Fuel, fuel records indicated that the airplane was operated about four hours since the previous refueling. The pilot would later state that he did not know why the engine lost power, but that it may have been the result of a failure to switch fuel tanks. Based on this information, it is likely that the pilot's uh, inadequate fuel management resulted in the fuel starvation and loss of engine power so there's that fuel switch um, on the on the left tank um, and then here's the left tank filler port empty thank you faa for these photos and here is the flight aware so the pilot left fremont airport and was headed towards sandusky county regional airport if you guys are familiar with this area um, in ohio and then didn't quite make it back to the airport. So probable cause on this one is the pilot's inadequate fuel management, which resulted in fuel starvation and a forced landing. Okay, moving on. We April 24th, 2023, we are at a golf course. And there you can see the aircraft did a forced landing and overran the golf course a little bit and went into the trees. So this sole pilot was also injured. We're going to find out. NTSB final report, April 4th, 2023, West Palm Beach, Florida. So there's that aircraft again. Firefighters are on scene. Again, no fire, no fuel. The pilot uh, was flying the airplane on a cross-country flight this time. Reported that while approaching the destination airport, the engine lost all power during the final descent. The airplane subsequently collided with trees on a forced landing to a golf course. No evidence of any pre-impact mechanical malfunction or failures to the engine were noted. The examination also showed that the airplane's fuel tank was intact and void of fuel. Additionally, while the engine was separated from the firewall, there was no indications of fuel spillage around the airplane on scene examinations. While the pilot stated that he had fuel, uh, had fueled the airplane during the fuel stop near the midpoint of a planned route, he did not provide any requested fuel records. And therefore, the airplane's fuel state prior to the flight leg could not be confirmed. And based on that information, it's most likely that it lost power because of fuel exhausted, exhaustion due to the pilot's inadequate uh, fuel management. Here is the main fuel tank showing no fuel. Thank you, FAA. Here is this aircraft, a Thatcher CX-4, November 7555 X-ray. And that that um, it was the Banyan Estates Golf Course, if you guys were familiar with this area, um, 1393 Lions Road. And you can see the damage. I mean, it's such a bummer. These two uh, pilots were in kind of flat areas, but just didn't work out, um, ended up you know damaging the aircraft and um hopefully they both were okay um but probable cause on this one was a loss of engine power due to fuel exhaustion and that reminded me of the rick flair um he was on joe rogan podcast talking about this cessna and i found the interview well ultimately he took five of us on the plane and he we didn't know at the time he was carrying no fuel because we were 1400 pounds over gross right so we get there and Hit it a little bit of a headwind. We're between seven and eight thousand. It's not a pressurized plane, so that's not three ten. And um, 
he did what's called past the point of no return. He should have landed in Raleigh and refilled. But he's looking and saying it's 100 miles, right? So unbeknownst to us, the guy who was in front of me, Johnny Valentine, who got paralyzed, kept looking at the gas gauge and looking back at me and going, uh, uh, I was going, Johnny, had that dry sense of humor. Well, we're flying along, all of a sudden the right engine goes boop, 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 boop. Maybe like six times over, like you see in the movies, and then bingo, pin, right? I went, shit. He reaches down and he pulls up the reserve, natural reaction, there is no reserve gas. Left engine went, beer, boom. And instead of a, a we went, flew into a uh, orchard, tree orchard, right? Normally it'll cartwheel a small aircraft. We were going so fast, we tore it down and landed a railroad embankment stuck at the ground at 230 miles an hour. So unbelievable, he survived. Um, here is the final report. I found it um, from October 4th, 1975. So there's that Cessna 310 he was talking about. There's the tail number, November 2956, Quebec. And uh, down here, um, miscalculated fuel consumption, improperly loaded aircraft, like he was saying, complete engine failure. And um, the pilot in command, fuel exhaustion, mismanagement of fuel. So this, these things happen. Um, you know, hopefully we can we can learn from this and uh, put some more fuel for for the for the flight we're going on. Maybe pre-planning. Um, but please subscribe. Thank you for all the support. And this is Arfaram Kionel. See you guys next time.